Good evening, YouTube. Heir of Carthage here. Welcome back to the end times, and I will be your narrator of the apocalypse as this amazing campaign continues. Um, we have a lot going on. Let me first say thank you. By the time I'm recording this, over 12,000 views on the last episode, almost 900 likes, and 152 comments. Thank you so much. If you do enjoy watching this video, of course, watch it first. If you enjoy it, please like. It helps a lot. It helps other people find the videos because it helps the algorithm pick us up. Subscribe if you want to see more and leave those comments. Tell me what you like. Participate or tell me what needs to be better. So thank you. I just wanted to say thank you so much. I do read all of those. Now, speaking of comments, let's jump into them. There are more awesome comments than I'm going to be able to cover in the beginning of this because we're going to have to get started, but I do want to hit some. So, uh, Count Saruman says, Sigvald the Marathi in a military alliance. Talk about successful diplomatic intercourse. You all can't see me, but I'm kind of nodding my head and like that stupid nod there. <laughs> Hopefully you figured that one out. All right, now Terhilius wrote us an amazing story. It is a really good one. I don't have time to cover it all because I want to read another one of his comments that he wrote specifically for me. But it was the most upvoted comment on there. So you all go look at Terhilius's comment from last time. He gave us a story about um, uh, Patchy asking out Marathi, and it's hilarious. It's hilarious. So go read it. It even has its own theme music. You need to go read the comment. Anyway, the other comment from Terhilius that he wrote specifically at my request around the Battle of Whitefire Tor. He says, as if it was part of Sigvald's Viking saga. So prepare yourself for Sigvald's saga. The Chosen of the Dark Prince, Sigvald the Magnificent, broke the gate of the eagle, forcing the queen and her love to free, taking their treasure as spoils. The oath sworn of Sigvald and Patchy marched forth through the mountains, only stopping once they heard of the new armies coming their way. Three great armies sent the foe, each one led by one of the enemy's greatest warlords outnumbered. Sigvald still did not stop, instead rushing to meet the enemy force before him, uh, or before it could rally and come to him as one. Unbeatable horde. You know, sorry, I got my emphasis all off there. <laughs> Silent warriors, maidens whose arrows stung like thunder, great drakes whose breath could melt warriors in their armor, all now stood before the chosen of Slanish, confident in their victory. Pride blinded the elves, making them easy prey to the chosen of the gods. In the shallow waters of the lake near Whitefire Tor, a thousand heroes were made and died. The pure, crystalline water soon turning red as more and more corpses fell in the lake. Faster than even his nimble foe, Sigvald and Patchy fell on one foe before turning to the next. Their swords, axes, and fangs cutting down hundreds of ancient soldiers and their beast. The Shadow King chief of the three armies fled through the shadows and terror leaving the battered remains of his force to flee or die at the hands of the chosen of the gods yet Sigvald and Patchy suffered too the hundred of Bjorn champions all became the elven after withstanding that same number of savage charges from the heavy elf horse the chariots of Norfeg stole many souls for Slanish yet lost half their number and their leader as a rain of blue, glowing arrows rained upon them. Sugfald, knight of the gods, and blood-bound to Sigvald, also was slain alongside thirty of his warriors, yet not before their spears took the life of an ancient drake of red scales. Danker, Drenar, Irmin, Pelask, and many others were soon greeted as heroes in the realm of the gods, their only regret being that they would not be able to follow their lord onwards as he laid low what remained of the elf's crippled resistance. Ooh, man, I like that. I like that. It reads like an old history thing. That was awesome, Terhilius. Thank you. The Battle of Whitefire Tor, folks. It'll be remembered now. All right, a couple last quick comments. These won't take long, I promise. Uh, in Sigvald's army, every person has a specific role. Let's read this. We got Besornling. He always fights in the background since he's just a character. Patchy. He aggravates the wounds of all in front of him with endless salt. The mirror guard rarely fight as they're always around Sigvald and their shields are how Sigvald locates minute spots of dirt on his cloak. The polisher, always near Sigvald, polishes stains on Sigvald's armor and uses his magic to polish the stains on the cloak. 
And by the way, this is Count Saruman making this as well. Uh, the Kentucky Friar cooks the enemy so that Patchy can season them with the salt, and Crush Skull crushes skulls. He's rather a marvelous work ethic. It greatly <laughs> is greatly dedicated and devoted to his job, and is always nice about asking for second helpings when the Kentucky Friar gets to cooking. <laughs> Woo! I love it. I love it. And then Uncle Bob, one last one here. Sextus is far too loyal to his vampire bride to even consider dalliance with one of those treacherous Bretonians. That's right. That's right. And then one other, sorry, one other quick one. Ronir Lucas says, imagine Archaeon asking for military access, LMAO. <laughs> That's true. Archaeon doesn't ask people for things. He uses people, perhaps, for his own means, but that's about it. I agree. I love the comments, folks. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I could read those for a long time, and I did. So, if you all start up the episodes and you don't want to see all the comments, it's fine. It's fine, fine. Okay? You all don't have to sit there and, and take all that if you don't want. Uh, I'm going to continue this. Well, actually, we just need to fight this because we're never going to have any siege equipment. So, let's roll. Well, Byron Mercier and the forces of Bretonia are arrayed against us. I don't know what their chances are, but if I had to guess, I would say that somewhere within an extremely close proximity to zero. You can see the Ever Chosen approaching the gates, their arrows don't even hurt him because of the amount of ward save that he has, and now Appius and Sextus are going to ride in and start reminding the Bretonians why they're absolutely inferior. Love it. <laughs> Those two characters have been absolutely amazing in this campaign. And they really do some nice work on these archers. My infantry is going to be moving to the walls in a typical fashion, swarming over. Their shields and heavy armor make them quite resistant to the non-armor piercing missiles fielded by the Bretonians. Man, this game is absolutely beautiful. This has got to be the best looking strategy game ever made. Hands down. So my great weapon variants are moving to the walls on this side. Let me give you an overview of what the Bretonians have to defend the city. They do have some Pegasus Knights. There are some Grail Guardians and Knights of the Lionhearted. Mounted Yeoman, Knights of the Realm. Yeah, Knights Errant, more Knights of the Realm. So there is a lot of cavalry present on the battlefield. Those Knights of the... or the Grail Guardians are somewhere back here. There's more Knights Errant. Mounted Yeoman. I know there's a grill. Yeah, you can see them. Well, I can't see them. <laughs> I know they're here because I saw them during battle. Ah, here they are. They were hidden back out of my view there. So there is a grail guardian. A tough unit, but a unit that probably won't quite be able to cut the mustard against Archaeon's army. Appius here, letting his manticore get a peasant snack. It's kind of like a Scooby snack, except for manticores. Archaeon and his halberds are slashing through the gates and will soon be through. I've ordered my cavalry to begin moving in behind them because the gates will soon fall. My cavalry was hidden over here in the woods, but you can see them now moving. So my Chaos Knights with shields and swords will be moving towards the entrance with Archaeon, and my knights with lances as well as the swords of Chaos will move towards the other gate, which I am now moving to capture with my... Chaos Warriors with great weapons. I'm going to bring them down and attempt to help capture this gate. Bretonia is getting its reinforcements ready. I'm going to give them a unit to charge down here. Give me one of my chosen with great weapons, and they will get pinned against the wall, but then they'll receive reinforcements. More chosen making their way over. You can see here Archaeon bursting through the gate and plowing through the pathetic peasants. He hasn't even had to swing his sword yet, and when he does, no doubt many peasants will die. But here comes the Knights of Chaos, the Sons of the Last Plague, all ripping their way in. And I'm going to have Appius drop a Pit of Shades here just because I can, and the Bretonians can't stop me. I think that was a debuff that I put on them there. And there comes the Pit of Shades mercilessly attack Bretonia. You can see on the walls, my infantry is now swarming the walls. These peasants are being beheaded 
at an alarming pace. Well, not alarming for me, but probably alarming for them. Let's take a look. This fight here where all the knights were trying to pin my infantry up, they couldn't do it. The infantry is too high quality, and it has burst through. And then my chosen with great weapons are starting to come down from the walls over here and engage the spearmen at arms. You have these Grail Guardians over here who are going to attack us. A tough unit, but they do not have an armor-piercing quality about them, and so my Chosen with Great Weapons are likely to just pick up more targets here. Look at the stats on those Chosen with Great Weapons. Each one of them is hitting about as hard as a troll does normally at this point. And I've got their reinforcements coming in. Sextus is making his way over there as well. <laughs> oh man, this game looking good. Woo! I love it. Can't get enough of it. I love doing these cinematic replays because I get to see these battles in their splendor. There goes Appius. And back here I've engaged some Knights of the Realm. We'll show them what true knights look like. They may be chivalrous knights. And they'll die for their chivalry, I guess. Yikes. Poor Bretonians, like, I almost feel bad for them because their armies are just so crap. No matter what builds they field here, there is no way they can stop this type of onslaught. Now, Archaean goes over here and ends up in an attack where he gets surrounded by a whole lot of knights and a whole lot of peasants. The Pegasus knights are moving over to make an engagement as well. And uh, when I noticed what was going on with Archaean, I decided to give the Bretonians a little present from their master here little present. Let's watch it. <laughs> and it decimates the knights who were attacking Archaeon, pushing them back. Archaeon's able to attack the Bretonian Lord who is defending. And you can see there's not much left of their pathetic defense. The field trebuchets and blessed field trebuchets are gonna rout their paladin routes. They've got nothing left. The Bretonians are utterly smashed. Defeated. And it's of no significant surprise that Byron Mercier and his forces of Bretonia were significantly thrashed by Archaeon. To be quite fair, there's little that Bretonia can do short of an absolute spam of Grail Guardians, Questing Knights, and Grail Knights. And I'm still not quite sure that would work, but it would help them do more damage than anything else. They were thoroughly destroyed. Their settlement will be raised for a significant amount of Dark Favor. Speaking of which, I had people... I had people say in the comments last time that I should give a significant amount of money to Norska. I don't think that Archaon gives things to people, right? I think he would expect them to earn it. I think he would expect them to earn it. So I'm sitting here thinking about that, wondering how do we make that happen. So maybe he's not giving anything. Um, I don't know. I want to give these guys money. I had some reason for it, now I forgot it. <laughs> You guys can help me fill in the how it would actually be okay. Uh, we're going to give these guys a bunch of cash. Like, a bunch. Um, I can't... Um, a generous gift. Gifts can be given in standing provided no deal demands are made. Otherwise, they'll be treated as payments. I do want to give a payment. Um, no, 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 no. I can't just give them money because of this, the stupid way this works. I don't know if it actually gives them money. But no less likely to kill you. Increase the standing. Yeah, I, I don't know if it actually gives them the money. I want to give them the money so they can use it to build armies in the name of Archaeon, but I don't think that just giving them the treasure chest or whatever really makes things happen the way that I want it to. Um... I've got these Chosen recruiting here that'll make uh, Ingerson's army have a whole lot more heft to it. Kolek 
finished off Manfred and is making sure that the vampires know that this is our territory, and not theirs. And then, of course, I'm letting Patchy and um, Sigvald take a break for this turn. And we have our new army, led by Vardek Krom. And Vardek Krom has made his move as well. We need to hit an encampment with him because we do want to start building the growth for him. We're not going to need this building there. The elves are attempting to assault Sigvald, and they failed. Vardek's army is ready to start laying waste to some of these pathetic settlements. And it is time for him to give his hand a try to be the herald of Archaeon. So here's his first settlement sacrificed for the Dark Gods. I really don't need the favor, and I like taking the favor. I'll take the growth in this particular case because Vardek's army is so young it needs to be built up so that he can be self-sufficient entirely and that's going to take a considerable amount of growth to do that. Let's head north. Ingerson's army is fully replenished and ready to wipe out uh, the Manfred von Karstein faction. I should have saved some movement points. Oh, I do have just enough to go into an encampment so Metastorm? More like Meat Storm. It's the only thing that these Skaven effectively do. Gonna awaken a tribe here at Frozen Landing. I think that if we've awoken the tribe at Frozen Landing, um, that Basornling Camp will simply wreck it. Uh, in fact, we can... I don't know. I'll leave it here because um, we're gonna be swinging through here with Felman. So I'm going to allow Kolek to start heading north and west. Vardek Krom took out Eilhart. And that leaves... Probably need to take out Blackstone Post. Karak Ziflin, uh Yeah, Karak Ziflin, Montfort. Paravon. Then we'll kind of work our way back over here. We skipped Lioness, apparently, or they've resettled it. I thought we tore down Museon. They may have resettled it. If so, that means there's an army down here. I don't see it at the moment, though. I thought we tore these down. If we did, and someone resettled it, I don't see that army at the moment. Maybe this will tempt this one through the pass as well. Now, here's the key. We won that huge victory at Whitefire Tour, and now it's time for us to capitalize on it. Um, we have to do huge amounts of damage. And I'm going to attack with Sigvald as he has the Hell Cannons in his army. And I'm going to encircle. I'm going to use both armies in tandem because we need to cause tremendous damage to the uh, the elves while they're reeling from that defeat. I will go ahead and loot this. Sigvald has made level 20. We finished all of the stuff on his tree there, which is pretty great stuff. Pretty great stuff indeed. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with his line here too. With uh, ooh, I don't know. Let's go with favored son, and then we'll start with Eye of the Gods, and then the polisher, who just continues to keep on polishing. Immortality is next for him. So that'll be great, knowing that I can't lose these characters. It worries me a great deal. A great deal. But Sornling just hit 20, so he is now immortal. He's already immortal in our minds. What? The Eagle Gate Ridiculous. could be sieged. It has a significant garrison. You dare. I can't just go hold it in siege alone, because we'll be defeated. I need Sigvald with me. But I'm thinking that we destroy the Griffin Gate on the next turn and then turn our attention north. Now that'll leave two gates open. And Malekith has landed. And we've got Admiral Amos here, headed in that direction. Marathi is here, and holy mackerel, she's serious? Whoo! Yeah, she's pretty serious with that army. <laughs> and um, yeah. So the elves are in huge trouble. Um, they're gonna have to rebuild very quickly and very potently. Now remember though that the elves do have some holdings over here on Nagaron. 
Uh, they made some inroads before I started this, so they do have Tyrion over here leading this army. Um, I don't know how significant that army is, but there's a, there's lots of Dark Elf armies around. Lots of Dark Elf armies. I really want that sword. And if the Lizardmen have it, then I may take it from them. I would love to send Archaon over there just to seize the sword for himself. Uh, that would be pretty entertaining. Pretty entertaining indeed. Still got a skill point on Patchy the Eversalt. Boy, he needs a lot of skill points. He's still not significantly powerful, really. Soul Blight is probably a good one. Well, look who's back. <laughs> Trayer didn't learn his lesson the first time. But now, my army has Chosen in it. And it's going to be even more difficult for him to defeat me. So, he better have brought a lot of reinforcements. Alright, as I begin this battle, I have no idea what I'm about to face. And then I quickly get a view of it. Of course, as a replay, I can see everything. But I can see just this single army of Skaven not even deployed in an ambush here. Because the AI... I don't know what breaks the AI here. I don't know if it is the reinforcements or if it's the custom map mod. I have a place this is not a custom map. But you can see all the different reinforcements coming in. And rather than set up an ambush, the AI is choosing to try and get its forces put together. And so this whole battle becomes kind of a crapshoot, where the AI is just trying to march to get in position with each other, and it really doesn't cause much damage. And as you can imagine, they're going to be defeated, and I'm just going to show you a couple of highlights, because this is not really worth watching from a strategic standpoint. So I just want you all to see the high moments. So, CA please, where is the AI going? Where are they marching? Look at this. I'm over here, the ambush zone is over here, where are they even marching to form up their troops? If they would have held their position here it almost made sense because then they could have had reinforcements coming from all over the map. But they're just marching nonsensically. And while marching nonsensically, I notice that they form this extremely dense rat blob here, which just has purple sun and hell cannon written all over it. Look at this! Alright. So I'm manually controlling the Hell Cannon, which is technically out of range. But you know you can extend the Hell Cannon for a little more rage. I want you to see this. That right there was about 100 to 130 Skaven kills. And a few moments later, not having learned their lesson yet, I launch another salvo from the Hell Cannon, being controlled personally, as they're slightly out of range for the automatic fire kill another hundred or so rats in a single blow, and at this point I realize how dead set the AI is in moving in this blob, and Coco Pox has a plan, folks, and I want you to see it. Well, if you couldn't believe the ignorance of the AI to begin with, moments later, after having killed much of this blob, some reinforcing vampire troops went into the blob, and they got very lucky. And my purple sun pulled out of their blob rather quickly, but even in that brief moment, Coco Pox picked up 290 kills, and the AI still doesn't break its blob behavior. They have a couple of units pulling out, but the vast majority are still there. So, oh, Coco Pox, he's not done. Nurgle's pestilent glory remains to be fulfilled. So, purple sun round two on the giant blob, and once again they're lucky, it veers off quickly. I can't overcast this one where it slows it down a little. And from 290 to 419 kills, I can't believe the AI's amazing strategic marching plan here. Let's look at the results of these different blobs. Here's the pile of corpses from one, the pile of corpses from another. You can see where the Hell Cannon Blast and the Purple Suns have hit them, and there's another new one right here. So killing hundreds of units at a time. Oh, if you all thought Coco Pox was done with two rounds, he's not. He gets temporarily slowed down by a Rat Ogre that charged him. My Manticores will make that right. You can actually see the Death Sorcerer himself back there, getting ready to throw this down. Reptile King, this was your character, so I hope you got to see this. He's racked up 724 kills on three Purple Suns, and pretty much personally gutted the Skaven armies because of the AI's complete and utter incompetence. The only remaining troops are over here. I destroy them with the Hell Cannon. That's the end of this sad story for the AI.
All right, it's a very strange battle. That's why I just gave you a couple of highlights whenever I went back and recorded it. The AI is acting absolutely idiotic and didn't really create any cinematic goodness, but it at least created some moments where I could show you a few units getting absurd numbers of kills against Skaven. And I guess this kind of matches up with the Skaven's mantra, right? Of just kind of being the, like, complete moronic villains that they are, like nothing ever goes right for them. So, Prayer, Metastorm, Zap Spark, all wrecked thoroughly. Well, it looks like Tyra there managed to hinder replenishment. I'll hinder your replenishment, you ugly vampire. Gunnarsson Kron? Oh, physical resistance and post-battle loot? That sounds great. Felman, you've done it again, you genius. Cease. I lost my chariots during that battle. Those are the only units they got absolutely gunned into pieces by the Skaven artillery. It was absolutely and utterly absurd. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Vampire Settlement so I'll have better replenishment here. Take the building there, or the uh, growth. I'm gonna keep working on this Blessed by Chaos. Should help my chosen and forsaken units. Um, I kind of do want a Chaos Steed so that I can get around quicker. I think you all saw in that kind of ridiculous battle with the Skaven that getting around the battlefield quicker can actually be a huge benefit to us. Huge benefit to us. I'm going to push forward with Kolek. We'll take a little bit of uh, attrition, but I don't care. I'm going to go destroy Crack and Track. These guys are just trying to resettle everything that I raise in a most annoying fashion. Zoom out on that map. Let's zoom in down here. Archaeon is ready to destroy these settlements. I'm pretty sure he already did. If not, then we're doing it again. And he reaches level 50. <laughs> level 50. Let's give him Deadly Onslaught, which just gives him even more ludicrous weapon damage when used in the right sequence. Devastating charge for Sextus. And as for Appius, we've done almost everything that we could or would need to. But I guess we're just going to start working on some of these other ones. Spread corruption. So, Ratonia is being quite thoroughly destroyed. Let's take out Helmgard. Bretonian settlements are hardly even worth our time because they're newly resettled empire settlements. They're being destroyed rather rapidly. I'm trying to see how much growth we get. We actually have a lot of growth points here. This is good. As soon as I get a chance to stop and actually use some of that, it'll be even better. Get an overcast. Ability on the pendulum. Okay. Cannot encamp with Felman. Kolek has made his move. It's time for us to take care of some business in Ulth 1. So we can assault this settlement. We absolutely have the Hell Cannons to do it. We could cause tremendous damage. We could destroy the Griffin Gate, leaving it wide open for the Dark Elves. There's already an Eagle Gate opening, though, so really feel like we should turn our attention onto settlements like Ever Evershale. This one hurts the elven economy pretty badly um, because it's one of their main ports and we want to cut it off now. Lotharn's capital actually is down here. If we cut off trade to their capital it's gonna hurt them bad. So that kind of makes me want to head south actually. I foresee destruction. Yeah let's head south. All right, Sigvald, we're going to attack Tor Elir. Let's continue the siege. 
Bring up my second army. We're gonna head south towards Lothern itself. Picked up another Helm of Discord. <laughs> Achieved victory over the High Elves multiple times to get plus three leadership when fighting against the High Elves. This is good. Now with Tour Elir in ruins, we're going to push towards the Tower of Lycian. And on to Lothern. If we can raise the capital city, it will surely send a terrifying glow through the Elves. You can see Ulthwan is starting to take a considerable amount of beating. They're going to be feeling it. Boy, Tyra continues to annoy my units, and with an agent level that high, there's probably little that I can do to stop it. I'm going to push onward with Sigvald. Let's hit an encampment. There are buildings that we can build. When I consider what's in Sigvald's army, I'm trying to see whether any of these feel like they're worth it. Um, I think the uh, Planikin of Trophies would be... Palaniquin. Sorry, Palaniquin. Keep saying that wrong. I think someone pointed that out to me previously. Sigvald's army has so many growth points. <laughs> oh boy. We'll just start building in more stuff. Alright, let's move Patchy's army up. White Peak was taken by the Dark Elves. Alariel the Radiant has respawned at Torin Rock, but Marathi is nearby and she's feeling a, a little bit mean. Malekith is there. Tyrion was defeated a couple turns back by um, Marathi out at sea and was pushed back. And then I think unceremoniously executed by a Skaven fleet while he was stuck at sea. Oh my goodness, another Admiral up there. Crone Halibron. Yeah, the High Elves are in some serious dookie. We broke their back at Whitefire Tour. <laughs> the High Elves were broken at Whitefire Tour. It was that significant of a defeat for them. They were an extremely powerful faction. But that crushing defeat was enough to basically send them spiraling down the crapper. All right, so the Bretonian coast is being destroyed. Altdorf was taken by vampires. That's kind of a sick joke. We've got all these settlements along the mountains. Gizero needs to be destroyed. Blackstone Post. Boy. Montfort is in striking distance. And uh, I don't know, though. We kind of need to go north. With this army. Karaburg's actually being sieged by the vampires. So I guess Vlad means to do some of our work for us. Little does he know that it won't buy him any credit with me. I'll crush him all the same and not think twice about it. I'm gonna move Felman up and hit the encampment so he can re recruit. His chariots, which definitely an important piece of his army. It'll take a couple turns. It's possible we'll be attacked while we're sti uh, yes. sitting and waiting. Kolek, on the other hand, will have reached crack a drack. And nothing here worth our time as long as the auto resolve doesn't screw us. Eh, wasn't great, but take it. Storm collar indeed, Kolek. Let's give him a Foe Seeker. Wound Maker and Scarred Veteran will do even more wonders for Kolek. How are we missing something in his army? Anger, Gluttony, Envy. What did we lose? Did I give a unit? And just not take it back? I'm rather confused as to what's missing in Kolek's army. Huh. Well, I can't recruit it this turn anyway. I have one, two, three, four, five Dragon Ogre Shagoths. Hmm. I don't know what I lost. If you all remember, let me know when you see it. 
Alright, Varda Krom is in a good point to build that. And we need more uh, population surplus before we do anything else. Krom's army should be able to hold its own against vampires because of his the backbone of Chosen, the knights, the cannon, and then the Shagoth, the giant, and the manticores. I, the combination of all that makes me feel fairly confident against vampire armies. Doesn't mean we'll be invulnerable by any means, but confident. I think that's the accurate way. Done those, let's do Blade Master. I am getting quite tired of fighting these Skaven, but I'm worried that if I don't destroy them, they're just going to multiply and then betray me, so no peace. Is it good? Did you look at the weather to see when the stuff's supposed to move in? Alright, Tyra is just unrelenting at this point. Shall we decant the wine? Yes, we shall. Let us decant the wine. Attack! Sigvald, you Darkness. decadent fool. Hail the slaughterer! So decadent. Uh, let's go ahead and unlock Eye of the Gods. And then uh, over here... The Kentucky Friar. Uh, he definitely needs more Flamestorm if he's going to be a Friar. And let's put him into an encampment. Nothing to build for now. Destroy the tower. We will be avenged. Eh, we'll go ahead and leave it. It's a turn's worth of upkeep. The Sornling is going to level up. Let's finish Woundmaker. Alright, Archaeon is ready to get back on the move. Didn't I just destroy these places? Who's resettling them? I want to catch them in the... Ah, there you are. It's the Fey Enchantress. There'll be no more resettling. Kesta von Karsteins did some of my work for me there. I'll take what I can get. I'm gonna move towards Marienburg. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade to Warband of Chaos with Vardek Krom. Got another turn of recruiting to get my uh, chariots back for Felman. I <clears> will. <throat> I really want to fight Helmand Gorst, but something tells me that he'll run like a coward. I'm going to try and chase him down, though there's no guarantee I'll get him. I want to destroy him, and we need to destroy Hell Pit as well, which means that I need, I'm need i going to have to swing Kolek out here and uh, get Felman and Kolek together and destroy Hell Pit. I'm getting really tired of this area of the map being a frustrating nuisance. Very tired of it. And what are the von Karsteins doing all the way up here? Did they chase Bretonia? I think they did. I was wondering, though. We're not at war with the Greenskins, and I don't intend to be friendly with them, though they feel friendly towards me. Right now, they are military allies of the von Karstein, which is making them very powerful. Let's see if we can convince them to break a military alliance with the von Karsteins. By offering a large sum of money. Let's say 50k. Alright. Wow, this is one extremely loyal green skin. That's a lot of teeth there. That's annoying. I hate how there's no price or nothing that will get them to cooperate. I want to create a little havoc, but 
they won't have anything to do with it. That is irritating to say the least. Irritating to say the least. Alright, Archaeon's made his move. Vardek has made his move. Patchy and Sigvald made their moves. Well, clearly Helmungorus just marched past me, only to destroy Besornling, knowing that they're going to die shortly after. That's a very typical move. Very typical move for the AI. Do something that's utterly pointless and will only delay your death, but cause annoyance to air. There's a huge garrison at Lothern, and Alethanar is rebuilding, and I can't wait to fight them. I want to fight them. It's going to be a challenging battle, but this time we don't have to fear those sisters the same because of the ranged weapons that I have. I'm almost up to level 9 on some of my Chaos Warriors, which means that I can trade them out for Chosen if that happens. I'll go ahead and build some towers, and, but ah, no, we're not, we're not going to come into the city. I don't know. I'll build the towers in case we feel like we need it, but we're not going to come into the city. So, I'm going to continue the siege. And I'm going to move up Patchy's army for reinforcement. Okay. Good grief. Lokir Felhart has been busy. He's making inroads to Ulthwan. We got Vampire Coast down here. The Blessed Dread took over the Kalyan's graveyard. And the sword is in possession of the Lizardmen at the moment. Or an army attacking the Lizardmen. I can't figure it out. Not based on what I can see. The Dark Elves are swarming into Ulthwan and will do a lot of our work for us here. Alariel is on the run back to her precious Gaian Vale. Avalorn is falling. Avalorn is falling. That Battle of Whitefire Tour proved to be quite decisive. The Fey is running north, heading for the pass, hoping to find her way to safety. Is there any safety, though? Is there any safety for her? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's see. Let's just go with thick skinned. And Appius spread corruption. Vardic Crumb should be able to wipe Marienburg off the map. Gave me a few too many casualties there, but. Vardic gaining victories. Let's go with Dominating Presence so that we can get this Blessed by Chaos. Start to improve his Chosen units, who are already Silver Chevroned, I think, just by the way they've been recruited. I'm going to take Felman's army and lay Siege to help it. It has a massive garrison, actually, so probably ought not to do that. Gorse and Manfred are back here, and they are running like cowards, but I will catch them. They can't run forever. I will defeat them. Let's take this army and assault Krog. I want to pin the Von Karsteins up and destroy them. Alright, Felman levels up. It's finished Blessed by Chaos. And then with Coco Pox, he's done spectacular. I want the overcast Purple Sun so that it can cause even more damage. Alright, so Vardek and Kolek have made their moves. I think that, yeah, and that leaves us with Lothern Sieged. Let's end our turn. I'm hoping to get a sallying out by Alethanar. We probably won't. No. But we might. It would be great. Alright. The elves are not going to attack me. 
They'll rot in their fortress. They feel like they're too weak to attack me. If they would, they would lose. But they would lose with honor. But they're not willing to lose with honor, apparently. Not willing. Let's get back to the destruction of Bretonia. Grung Zint needs to be destroyed. Wow, they tried to kill my giant there. CA, please. Alright, Vardek leveling up again. We can begin Blessed by Chaos. And then, uh... We need to name the sorcerer, by the way. I'm not sure if I saw any suggestions for names there or not. Let's give him a name and some background. Destroy Gizero. Okay, and with... Oh boy, so much stuff. Let's go with standard die. He's got so many abilities in battle. Fey Enchantress is still quite close at Castle Artois. I hope to destroy it, and then we need to swing through and finish off more of these settlements. Even with two armies, the Bretonians are resettling at a somewhat unsettling pace. Helmut Gorst ran for it, and I would assume that Manfred has likely done the same. I'm going to awaken a tribe here. That may allow me to actually keep moving. It does. I have yet to uncover Manfred. But I'm going to siege Gorst so that he can't escape. If he and Manfred team up, I don't think that they'll be able to overcome Felman. We're going to get up here with Kolek and give these guys a stomping like the undead have never received before. And there's only one more vampire settlement over there. What we'll do is destroy Volksgrad, swing to Hell Pit, and then move up and take out that last vampire settlement. Ah, there's another one over here. you got to be kidding me. How do you get rid of these disease bags? It's just like you can't kill enough of them. Ugh. It's just getting frustrating at this point. And of course, um, Lothern won't fight us. They're not going to receive any significant reinforcements. Tyrion's back here. He could attempt to bring reinforcements. We'll see. I don't know if he will do such. So I'm going to remain camped with Patchy. And then Colex Sun Eater is leveled up. Let's go to Wound Maker. Oh boy. Yeah, look at that damage. We can get him over 700 weapon damage on the next upgrade. Yes! Glorious battle. Sweet, glorious battle. So Elithanar, the Settlement Garrison, and Tyrion are going to fight us. Folks, I'm going to start this battle off in slow motion because there's going to be a lot of action. It's going to be fast and furious. And we've got Sigvald here who has his back turned to the elven troops because he's apparently wanting to look in the mirror, but his mirror guard isn't here. <laughs> the Polisher? Maybe he's commanding the Polisher to get those pesky stains out. Hasn't he destroyed enough elves to gain this elven tide that they came here searching for? All right, so I've got the armor piercing chosen with great weapons in the middle of my forces. I have the Ever Wardens nearby. Now they are unbreakable, but they are not nearly as powerful as my chosen. I do have some Chaos Warriors with great weapons as well. And then I've got my Halberds guarding the three Hell Cannons. The Hell Cannons are going to help me deal with the Elven Archers. My armored and shielded Chaos Warriors are moving in from the flanks as they won't be as good against the Sword Masters. So bring them in from the flanks. My cavalry's on the flanks. Bersornling's ready to move in too. Now on this other side of the map, which I will bring you over to quickly, um, Patchy and the Kentucky Friar are bringing in their army. And their disgusting, hideous creatures are coming onto the battlefield. Tyrion, being ignored, isn't happy about it. So he's turning all of his troops to face towards Sigvald. But... Apache is in pursuit and will be there shortly. Let's move across the map yet again. Do that right quick. So there's going to be a vicious engagement here with the elves. 
I use my Hell Cannons to damage up some of their Swordmasters of Hoeth, and Sigvald comes crashing right into the ranks of the Elves. He is very unconcerned with their ability to fight him. The Sornling's going to dive in as well. I didn't want him to get attacked in the air by all the flying critters here from the Elves. But immediately, the Lothern Sea Guard and Sisters are going to come onto the battlefield and start targeting my cavalry, but I'm going to put an insane Hell Cannon barrage down on him. Now that I have these Hell Cannons, the Elves are going to find themselves in a bit of a pickle when it comes to these fights. Right when the Dragon lands over here, I'm getting a final transmutation off on the elves, so this is going to be extremely good timing for me. Two eagles, a high mage, and uh, I don't think Aletha Nara was over here. He's standing right over there. But we got a lot of the uh, high elves in here and did tremendous damage to him. Now, let me swing over to the other side again and show you how things got started here. My chariots got a little bit ahead of the group. Crush Skull and his trolls are really the armor-piercing, anti-large capability of this army, even though they're not specifically made for that. And I want this uh, star dragon, or sorry, moon dragon on the ground. And as soon as the moon dragon lands, it's right in the midst of my trolls, and here comes Crush Skull. He doesn't care how big the skull is, he'll crush it. It's not going to take long. That dragon starts taking a significant beating very, very quickly. I'm able to kind of rearrange my forces. I was using the bombardment ability to kind of keep those sisters on their toes. I'm going to swing some Forsaken and some Chaos spawn out. We'll deal with the sisters. This fight over here is just a giant blob where Crush Skull crushes skulls. You're not going to miss much. Now, meanwhile, over here, the forces of Sigvald and the Polisher are attacking with fury on the elves. And the elves are fighting because they know that this is their last chance. Look at the Polisher here. Sees this. Elven Blob and mercilessly calls down a Searing Doom on it. The Hell Cannons have not laid off. The Sornling's back here getting rid of an Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. The Elves did do some damage to my cannons, but they can't finish them. And they're taking horrendous damage in return. Their archers are trying desperately to do some work against my cavalry. Their Moon Dragon over there, again, attempting to do anything it can to turn this battle, but it just isn't enough. Their Dragon Princes not doing so well this time. My Mirror Guard and Warriors with Halberds are holding up extremely well over here. The Phoenix Guard don't attack quite as well as the Swordmasters. The Swordmasters were pretty well dealt with. The Sister of Avalorn over here is attempting to destroy my Hell Cannon, so I'm going to turn my Hell Cannon's attention there. And there's a beautiful blob here too, a Phoenix Guard, which will attack soon enough. Now that the Sisters have been pretty well dealt with, the left flank of the elves is collapsing, and my forces are wrapping up. You can see there the sisters just taking a pummeling. Now I'm going to redirect the hell cannon to this blob of Phoenix Guard. And although these are very capable units, they can't take this kind of bombardment. They're going to take tremendous damage very, very quickly. You can see how important these hell cannons were to our capability to destroy the elves. If we didn't have those hell cannons, it would have been a horrible grind out fight against all these Phoenix Guard. My cavalry is just running amok all over the back lines. The Dragon Princes are attempting to stave off some of this. The Sornling is ripping through their infantry. Alethanar is being attacked by Sigvald, or at least he's attempting to get to Alethanar. The Shadow King himself is kind of up in this blob. See Sigvald there attempting to get a hold of him. He is getting a good slash in there. Alethanar is going to flee in terror. And Tyrion's troops also rout. They weren't able to deal with Crush Skull. And the Phoenix King was fruitlessly chasing chariots while Crush Skull crushed the life out of his army, and he too is going to flee. Well, once again, Prince Sigvald pulls off. An extremely important victory, along with the help of Patchy the Eversalt and Crush Skull, who crushes skulls, especially dragon skulls, like no one's business. Yeah, the deployment for Tyrion there was suboptimal, and even though my armies were split, I'm able to pin all of his reinforcements, and though they were qualitatively superior, their position is inferior, and it causes them to lose. So they are heavily defeated. Patchy's army will be able to replenish. 
However, the garrison should not be able to replenish. And that leaves us in a significantly powerful position over Lothern. All right, we finished some of our research. Let's continue it. There's not a whole lot else here that's going to be terribly useful, but... Let's see, leadership for Chaos Knights. Let's do the leadership for Chaos Knights. Having our knights be absurdly strong is not going to hurt anything. And we've caught Helmen Gorst. I want you all to see the flaying that he gets at the hands of Kolek and Felman. Folks, we've committed some acts of sheer savagery during this campaign. This will be amongst the top of them in the list. Helmand Gorse is hopelessly outmatched with an army of mostly skeletons and zombies, and the few graveguard that he has are already being bombarded by my two hell cannons. Skullex the Great is going to move in and ready a breath attack for the Sternsman, and my huge army of dragon ogres is going to move in and savage the vampire flank while they're attacked by the infantry of Felman Ingerson from the opposite flank. So this is going to be me just completely pinching the vampires between a chaos rock and a chaos hard place, so to speak. Look at Skull X. This guy's brutal. I was searching for his target here and I saw tons of zombies and then I spot the Sternsman off in the distance realize that these are the ones who need the attention of Skullex. You can see Kolek here is just beelining it towards Gorst, and Gorst and his corpse cart just don't quite have the, shall we say, corpse power to stay ahead of him. That was just brutal. Look what's left of the Sternsman after that one breath attack. 74 Sternsmen killed. Kolek gets temporarily slowed down by the other corpse cart. And uh, Gorst must really be whipping those zombies and asking them to move fast. He's going to wish that he had reanimated some horses. Kolek doesn't run very gracefully here. Look at him. What is this? He's not even in the running animation. He's just like a speed walk. I guess he's trying to get some exercise. He's been eating too many vampires. Getting a little soft in the underbelly. Kolek's weapon strength is about 1,019, by the way, while he's attacking here. So you can imagine he's putting a severe thrashing. And you can see that the army of Gorst in the background being completely savaged by all manner of chaos creatures. And what has to be one of the worst slaughters in the history of any of my Warhammer campaigns and possibly even in the Warhammer lore. I don't really know the lore, but I can't imagine that they were going to write something as lopsided as this battle. There goes Gorst. And the remaining corpse cart is kind of a joke here. Like batter up. <laughs> Colex doing some home run practice. That shadow vampire trying fruitlessly. Yeah. Alright, folks. It is finished. The episode, that is. <laughs> Not the apocalypse, but the vampire counts needed a solid beating after the annoyance of me having to turn around and deal with them this way. And I'm glad that Kolek and Felman could give it to them properly because they certainly deserved it. I do hope you all enjoyed this episode. That is all the time I have for now. We will be doing more in the near future, so stay here. If you liked it, click that like button. If you want to see more, subscribe, click the bell be able to see it again yes, leave your comments tell me what you think you and tell me what you want to see next air of carthage signing out for now see you soon